one of the things that I used to love the most about my ex-girlfriend was the fact that she used to speak while she was asleep. <laughs> and it was so, you know, it was so lovely and surreal that every time I had to get closer and ask her like an idiot, what did you say, my love? And she always replied, oh, blah, blah, you know, <laughs> because she was sleeping. But then, one rainy and, and sinister and cold night in Barcelona, where I actually live, I thought I heard something like, we should break up. So I get closer, and I ask her, what did you say, my love? Convinced that I didn't get any reply, and she said, we should break up. <laughs> so we broke up, that was the sad part of the story, and I felt completely destroyed after that. You know, uh, you know, when you broke up with someone, it's quite, quite you know, bad. And I, you know, I lost my self-confidence. If I ever had one, I lost it. It was ruined. I desperately needed to feel better again. I, need to, I needed attention again to feel, I don't know, beautiful again, you know, because I hated myself. And I needed to like myself again. So, but you know, not finding new hobbies or making interesting things or doing things like, I don't know, yoga or meditation, like smart people do, not at all. I thought, I need a quick fix. I need something maybe harder, better, and faster, and stronger. So I decided to try to become a model. <laughs> you know, why not? In Barcelona, everyone is taking pictures to everyone constantly. And they are not only Chinese, you know. Everyone is taking pictures. So I thought, why not me? Do I have any problem? There's something wrong with my face. So. You know, I, I decided to try it, and since I, have, since I, I was a little boy, I, I always had a peculiar relationship with photos and with my appearance. Let me give you an example. When I was three years old, I think I was pretty beautiful, and I was my, my mother's proud. Also, my brother tried to kill me at that age, because I had, seriously, I had all the attention of me. Such a weird thing that your brother tried to kill you because you're beautiful, you know? I didn't have... <laughs> so it's like, why? But then something happened, I think it was life, years, I don't know, problems, works and stuff. And if the police start me right now driving a car, they will find this picture, you know? <laughs> Where I look more like a narco-terrorist <laughs> instead of my mother's proud. So, you know, I, had, I have a Russian friend in Barcelona that is a photographer, a friend of mine. And he worked for a few stock photos um, websites. And one night, I asked him to take me some pictures, and he accepted. So I had my first and only photo shoot of my life. And, you know, it was great. I had a lot of Russian all around me, uh, helping me, you know, brushing my hair, uh, you know, just giving me makeup and stuff, all in a Russian way, bringing me coffee and stuff. And, uh, you know, so I had this Photoshop, and it was great because, you know, they were telling me just, like, raise your chin, you know, and then, then <laughs> I don't know, just look at there, you know, and now point to there, like, okay, okay, it's good, nice. And then look at the iPod, okay, perfect, scare. Be scared, more scared. And that's it. <laughs> so here I am, I thought, now I am a, a model? Now I am one of them, one of those people that earn money only because they're Good-looking parents had sex once, you know, I thought, wow, what a nice life would, would, would it be. So, but I must say that I, that I really know, don't know what uh, stock photos were. For me, they were only like empty portraits of people, you know, working on that computer. is always happy, you know, where there's always a, an Indian or a black guy, you know. I thought, why, you know, I had to do something different. I had to act like an idiot, like you saw if I wanted to have a chance to get noticed, because I wanted it. So after the photo shot, I was shaking, and I signed the paper without reading a single word. I didn't care, I was like, okay, give me that paper, sign it, okay, pam, pam, pam. Even if I knew that I was giving up all the rights of my, on my photos. I was thinking about money, fame, cars, and success, caviar, girls, parties, and champagne. I was ready to live the dream. I was ready to become my mother's proud again. But a few days after the session, I decided to Google those pictures, because my friend told me that they were online. I was pretty curious and, and you know, nervous. So I, 
look in, in the Google, in Google, but you know, I had this, this same, the, that weird um, feeling as when you want to look what the little stain on your forehead is because you're a little bit scared and you have only one voice in your head that is saying cancer. It's cancer, you're gonna die for that, you're gonna die. I was a little bit scared. And the first articles where I found my face on were how to mindfully deal with jerks. <laughs> Followed by uh, the vindictive ex, when hate comes before children. <laughs> okay? Then I was walking down the street when a complete stranger called me a slut. And then how to encourage your girlfriend or wife to lose weight without getting slapped. <laughs> okay, my mother called me, hey Nico, yes, I know, I know, I know, don't, don't worry. Good things come for those who wait, I thought, and I waited. So days after, I found myself my face promoting shaving products, mobile phones, products for gluten intolerance, <laughs> uh, a yellow alcohol beverage with a nice yellow T-shirt, <laughs> and then I'm also in Amazon, <laughs> in, a, in a Wolfman book, and I am the Wolfman, and it's free for Kindle, if you have Kindle. <laughs> that is such a good souvenir, because I have it in my place at home, and when I, when I have guests, it's like, look, that's me. <laughs> and then, horrible song by an untalented music producer for Saudi Arabia that used my face to promote his song. Why my face and why with that filter, you know? <laughs> anyway, and then, at last, uh, I love this one, for the biggest Venezuelan newspaper with five million followers on Twitter, I had the perfect face and the perfect expression of someone who just discovered to have a dick disease. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Paraphimosis. <laughs> you know? I didn't expect all of that. I was pretty, a little bit scared, but you know, at the time I was working uh, for a magazine uh, called Vice, and a friend told me, why don't you write something about that? It's funny, it's funny. Yes, okay, so I'm gonna write an article. So I wrote an article about the story, and then, of course, uh, a lot of people started sending me more pictures of me all around the world. <laughs> so I get, you know, gasoline in the fire. <laughs> and uh, this is in Barcelona, around the corner. I am there in a coffee shop. Then I'm in a box game in France. Now I'm, I'm promoting season sales in a parking in Italy. <laughs> then I'm telling you to mind the gap in a flight to Berlin. And then, I love this, I conquered, literally conquered Australia with my youth face one year ago, promoting new mobile tariffs in Sydney Airport, and then in every bus, <laughs> then in every subway of the five million city. I thought, well, I'm, I, I think I'm famous there. I should go there and live like a star, you know? But I didn't. <laughs> so it was funny, but a little bit scary. I didn't earn a single euro for that, and I didn't get my ex-girlfriend back. Do I want it? No. So now it's been three years that I took those photos, and uh, people still text me almost every week, and it's always funny, you know, I don't care anymore. And my face is, is expanding and, and growing and bigger while I get smaller and older, you know, and my face is like there, getting bigger like a big electron, you know, whoa. I think I'm gonna conquer the world without getting money, but it's okay. So <laughs> why don't I ask uh, my friend to delete those photos? Because I'm still waiting for a good one, I don't know, I, I don't care, it's, it's, and it helps me to take life less serious, you know. I laugh at me every, 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 almost every week, and it's not a problem anymore. <laughs> and also because I think that good things come for those who wait, and I only hope that it's gonna come while I'm still alive, because I think that this thing won't probably stop even if I die tomorrow, and it would be hard for my mother, I think. What, so what have I learned from this story? Which one is the moral behind all of this? Because there's always a moral, I think. Well, for sure, you should read what you sign. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> also, maybe find an ugly partner if you don't want to suffer. <laughs> I don't know. And, or maybe that you could be a jerk for someone irrelevant for your ex-girlfriend, maybe a stupid or an idiot, a wolfman. Maybe you can have 
a dick disease for Venezuelan people. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, you know, the only important thing is what you want to be in your life, what you want to do, what is your mission, why you are here, you know. So, for example, in my case, I always wanted to be a comedian, but I never had the courage to, to try it since I realized that I had a story to tell and I wrote this pitch. So thank you very much to listen to me. <laughs>